bar really mean? What does this bar really mean? Does that bar change the value of a number? What does that bar really mean? It means to, it just means how it, it, it just splits the uh, two numbers. It splits the two numbers. All right, let's build on that a little bit. Out of? Out of? I want to keep going. Um, the bar in the middle will represent how the new denominator basically represents how many pieces are in that hole. Very true. All right. And then the denominator. You're right about this, but I'm going to stop everybody right here. Listen up very quickly. Listen up. Let's look at it again. Two A's times two equals four A's. I agree with this statement. I agree with this statement. However, this two has a value of what? Two. Correct. Now, we place the one as the numerator. Did it change the value of two? No. Huh? No, it did not. Two over one is still two. Two, two is two. What symbols, what operations, what signs do you know that don't change the value of the number if you either blank or blank that number? Addition and multiplication. Multiplication what? And addition. Not addition, multiplication and? Division. Good, multiplication and division, right? In multiplication. Any number times one is one that number, itself. That number oh, right, or itself, itself, right? Four times one is four. four. Five times one is five. Six times one is six. But we're not multiplying here. We are doing what? Dividing. dividing. We're dividing. This bar here means division. So we can read this as, draw an arrow up, two divided by one, one equals two. two. All right? Fractions are nothing more than division, as you'll get ready to see. All right, so let's go ahead and if I can get somebody to read this essential question for us today as we go into our lesson. Yes, ma'am? How can using models help us find the product of a whole number and a fraction? All right, so let's reread that again. I'm going to state it out loud again. How can using models help us find the product of a whole number <laughs> and a fraction? All right, familiar terms in that, familiar terms in our essential question. All right, what are some terms here that you are familiar with? I see whole number, fraction, something else I'm looking forward to, something else I'm looking forward to. Numerator. All right, well, stick to the essential question. I don't see numerator in the essential question. All right. Product. Product. That's the word that I didn't name. I said whole number and fraction. Product. What is a product? Let's go ahead and look at the lesson vocabulary. What's a product? All right, because we're going to be looking for products today. What's a product? Yes, sir. A product is where you place two numbers and you add them or subtract them or divide them or uh, multiply them and you get your answer and the product, whatever, wait. I'm going to stop you right there. You said so much, but the end was correct. The end was correct. Someone help this guy out. Help this guy out. He said the correct thing. He said that he, he ended up saying the correct answer. All right. Identify what that was that he said was correct about the product. Yes, sir. All right, it's the answer to a Tevin. Equation. It's, it's the answer to um, a division question. Not a division. Not a division. A product is an answer not to a division. Malik, I'm gonna call on you. Help us out here. Product. It's it's an answer. It's not the answer to a division problem, but it is the answer to a what? What type of problem? Call on a friend. Help on you. Call on your brother right there. Equation. Talk about it right here. This table. Talk about it. Talk about it. Answer to a. It's an answer to a. Talk about it. Agree with each other. I'm gonna help you. Out. I think it's all good. I'm with you. Give me it. Malik. It's the answer to a what type of a problem? Good. We agree with that over here? Yes. yes. Good. All right. So we're going to be looking for products, all right, answers to a multiplication problem. Hence, all right, we go back to our objective. All right. What are we doing today in class, folks? <coughs> Someone go ahead and read that for us. Someone over here. I haven't heard much from you guys over here. Let's go ahead and talk, talk about our objective. Just read it for us, too, please. All 
All right, I can use a model to multiply whole numbers by fractions. Now we said we know how to multiply whole numbers by fractions here by placing a one as the denominator of our whole number. Today, all right, what, is it gonna, what does it say we're going to use today to multiply our whole numbers by fractions? Yes, ma'am? Model. A model, all right? So I'm gonna draw that, but I'm also gonna show you on the carpet using some eggs how to multiply whole numbers by fractions, all right, using a mod, all right? So I'm gonna write this in a little later, all right? Product, answer to a multiplication problem, whole number, if you can just give me some examples of whole numbers. Someone give me an example of a whole number. Five. Two, that works. Seven. Seven. Twelve. Twelve. One. One. So our whole numbers don't have what? Fractions. They don't have fractions or denominators. Not denominators, but decimals. I was looking for that word. Decimals. They don't have um, decimals or the, or fractions, right? And we go back to our unit on division. You go back to fourth grade, right? When you have a problem like eighty-one divided by nine, it divides equally, right? So you have an answer of nine with no remainder. Right? No decimal, no fraction. All right? So whole numbers are just numbers that don't have anything left over. They divide equally. All right? you're, you're able to create, create equal groups. Okay? So now, numerator, denominator. Let's, let's, let's knock those out. Numerator. What's a numerator? All right? What's a numerator? What does that tell you? It's the number on top. It's probably greater or less than the, the denominator. All right. So all right, let's just take 2 eight. Two eight. You're saying that what? The top is the numerator. The two is the numerator, all right? And and what number in two eighths is our denominator? Let's just start here. Eight. Eight. So two is our numerator. Eight's the denominator. All right. So let's write that here real quick. Numerator. Denominator. All right. Now, what are their roles? What are their roles? How are we going to use them? What do they tell us? What do they tell us? The big number, wait, basically is... And I, I'm going to stop. Let's not say large number or small number. Let's stick to their names, numerator and denominator, okay? The denominator is, is supposed to hold the big number, and the numerator is supposed to hold the little number, because if it was, if it was, if the, denom if the denominator, uh, if you switch it up, and it will be eight twos. If you switch it up, it will be an improper fraction. I agree with you there, that if you switch it up, it would be an improper fraction. However, I want to hear the role of the denominator. It tells us what? Go ahead, Deb. It tells us how many pieces are inside the whole thing. Okay, it tells you how many, and I'm going to add one more word to that. How many pieces are in the whole, how many, what's that word fraction. I'm looking for? Not fractions, but e equal. equal parts are in the Whole. How many equal parts are in the whole? The denominator tells us how many equal parts are in the whole. The numerator tells you what? If we have eight equal parts in the whole, the numerator tells us what? How many pieces are in that whole? Not how many are in that eight. whole. Eight pieces make up the whole, but the how many have to stay in that whole? How many? Not stay in the whole. How many are, how many are left? How many? How about this? The numerator tells us how much we have in the whole. Out of the whole. All right. Let's say this. All right. I have eight tires in my garage, okay? I take two out of those eight and put them on my bike. I took two eighths of my tires and put them on my bike. Understand? All right, so now let's get into the, the model, all right? And I'm gonna tell you this one real quick. Factors, all right? And, I, and I'm coming back to it, I forget who said it, but factors, we talked about two things to get a product, all right? What are those two things that help us get our product called? Not fractions, factors. Factors, factors, right? Two factors give us a product when we multiply them together. So I'm gonna ask that we turn our attention to the warm-up problem, okay? And here's where we'll begin to look at this model. And then I'm gonna use some actual eggs to help us solve this problem, all right? I'm gonna read it aloud, okay? Then read it to yourself again after I read it aloud. Mr. Harris makes an omelet every Saturday, okay? Currently, he has nine eggs. He's got nine eggs in there. 
he uses one third of his eggs to make his omelet. How many eggs did he use? All right. So it says, Mr. Harris makes an omelet every Saturday. Currently, he has nine eggs. He uses one third of his eggs to make his omelet. How many eggs did he use? Nine thirds. All right. Let's set this up in a way that we know from the past. How can we set up this equation? Someone set up this equation. All right. What does this equation look like? Yes, ma'am. So he has, he has nine eggs left. He has what? He has nine, nine eggs. eggs. All right, I'm going to just write nine. I'm going to write nine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he uses, he uses one third of his, of his egg. All right. He uses one third of his egg. All right. What type of problem is this? Division. 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 Let's refer back to oh, our essential question, OK? In our objective, what are we doing today in class? Multiplying. We're multiplying, right? We're looking for products. So is this a division problem? No. no. Multiplication. multiplication. I'm going to stick a multiplication sign in between these two numbers, and I'm going to come back and tell you why and how you know that you're multiplying in this type of a word problem. When you look at this problem, the first thing you want to ask yourself and you kind of want to grab a, a red marker or a red colored pencil, you want to stop and think to yourself, what is this question actually asking me? And we're going to underline that in here. What is this question actually asking us? How many eggs does he have to Good. How, ooh, not a good one. How many eggs did he use? Now, Previously, as we talked about earlier, we know how to solve this problem, correct? Yeah. Let's solve it and see if our new method, all right, agrees with our old method. So let's go ahead and solve it right now. How many eggs did he use? Let's figure that out nine. right now. How am I going to, let's just set this up right now. What do I need to do with this nine? Multiply by one third. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Multiply by one third. How can I make it so I can multiply my numerators by my numerators and my denominators on put a one, by my denominators? Put a one. Under. Put a one under it. All right. So I'm going to put this bar here. So now we have what? Nine. 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 One. Nine. 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 Nine divided one. by one, right? Yeah. Nine divided by one times. One third. One third, right? And nine divided by one is nine. 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 So here we go. Numerator times numerator. Nine thirds. Nine. Denominator times denominator. Three. Three. All right. If you know this bar means division, what is nine divided by three? Yes, three. sir. Three. All right. So we know that he used three eggs. Let's prove it using a model. All right. How many eggs did he use? Three. All right. We know that he has nine total eggs. All right. We know that he uses one third. First step is this. All right. Step number one. You want to take your whole number and create a model. All right, and I'm going to write that. All right, I'm going to write you some quick notes, OK? Create a model, all right? Create a model using your whole number. All right, what's our whole number here? Nine. Nine. Good. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these eggs right here in this box, and I'm going to take nine of them out. Watch this. Now, let's go back to fourth grade, right? Yeah. Nine. Let's talk about divisibility rules. When you, think, when you hear the number nine and you think of division, what, no, what other number comes to your head? Three. 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 Good. Divisibility rules, right? Yeah. Nine is a multiple of three. three. Let's skip count by threes all the way to nine. Three. Three. three six. six nine. nine. All right. Cool. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just take these nine eggs and I'm just going to put them in groups of three. All right? Because that's what feels right. All right? So I'm going to take one. Count these with me. One, two, two three. three. All right. That's one group. One, one two, two three. Second group. One, 
two, three. All right, so I have a total of nine here. All right, so here's our nine. All right, step number two. You're going to use your denominator, all right? What's the role of the denominator? Yes, sir? To keep, to keep the, uh, so it won't, the number won't, the numerator won't go above. Help him out. Let's help him out. Let's call on a friend. Call on a friend. What's the role of the denominator? It, what does it tell us? The role of the denominator tells you that you, so you won't, you can go over your number, but that's the whole. That's how many are, that's how, how many. How many, what did Tevin say earlier? He said that's how, how many, many pieces, pieces are in the whole, or how many equal, equal pieces. Right? Yes. So we have three equal groups in our whole. Our whole is now nine. Generally, we think of a whole as one. Our whole is nine, right? Our whole number is nine. So what this is telling us to do is break our nine into three equal groups, which is what I did, right? And that's what the uh, denominator tells you. It says create equal parts out of what you have. So we have nine. Can we create three equal groups from our nine? Yes. Yes. All right, good. Your numerator tells you what? What yeah, did I say our numerator? It, it tells us what? It, it, can make, it can make a hole. Like it's, how many pieces are out of the hole? All right, it's what you have. Yeah. Right, Angie? It's what you have. Right, Tavin? Right, Malik? Yeah. It's what you have. I want to know how many eggs are in one of my three groups. How many eggs are in one of my three groups? Come look one, at the carpet. Three, three. Three. Is that not the same answer that we got here? Yes. See how that makes sense? But you got to really call on your, your facts, right? You got That's got to be in your head, right? So it's the importance of your fluency, your fact fluency, multiplication and division facts. You must know that, all right? So this is what I'm going to do. I want you as a group, I'm going to finish writing some rules to this. I want you as a group, look at the sheet that I gave you that has whole numbers times fractions on it, right? Amongst your group, there are 15 problems on that paper. Identify the problem in which you can take your whole number and divide it equally. I'll give you a hint. There's only one problem on there where you can take your whole number and divide it equally, all right, by the denominator. Identify that. Find that fact where you can grab your whole number and divide it equally into what's on the denominator, all right, while I finish writing down the rules. All right. And you can reference these rules to help you guys out in your groups that you're sitting in right now.